God bless, God bless everybody's beautiful Wednesday morning. Apostol is out of the God bless everybody out there who's listening to me. We are loving well. God is alive and well. He's in his throne. He sees everything. And he wants everybody to come to know who he is. Amen. And we're here in Zoom be here to pray for your families and communities. Wherever you live in, I'll be praying for each person out there that could listen. But God is still um, praying for people. We still say we God wants to heal, deliver, but we got to seek him. Uh, that's what it says in Second Chronicles 7, 14. My people call by my name. Uh, will humble himself and seek my faith, forsake their wicked ways. He's going to come down and heal our lands. So we got to seek his presence, amen? We got to humble ourselves. And many people don't do that. They just going to go to church, go and look at each other's faces, uh, read a verse and go home. It got to work like that. It got to be a commitment for life. Because he's coming back for us sooner or later. The word says it. God ain't going to tell everybody his nonsense, man. He knows the, he really know, when I fact, God Almighty nobody knows the time already, man. He knows the moment what's going to happen. He's giving time to, to the people come to know his son, Jesus Christ, personal savior. And what says in Peter, not willing unto Christ, you'll come to repentance. And for the same time, people, you know, they, they're very like little children, they don't want to hear it. Everybody's in the world, worshiping their false gods, doing the way they want to do, but God's still is calling them. And um, they take know that he loves that he died for his son, died for them. God, God, you know, God doesn't think like we think. God got limits, but he was on the people to repent. And when when the final one, the final moment when it comes that you really get enough uh, chances, enough time, it's over. That's it. The books are, are closed. The books are open, man. And this book about to be closed soon. The Bible about to be closed. We live in the end times, man. The book of Revelation is going to be fulfilled. Like with Daniel, it's going to be fulfilled. That's going to end this book. It's an ever-ending life book. This book is forever, man. This book is, is the real thing. It's not a fairy tale. And many people take it lightly. Thousands of them, bro, in churches. But the word of God, I got to get fulfilled. God says that heaven should pass away, my wish should not pass away. If God would have come down to here, I'd excuse himself. Why he came down to, to the earth and be kind of like one of us and that force in his wretched body of flesh, he was black eternal. Come on. It's a purpose. He had to fulfill that, fulfilling the Father's will. But the first Adam sold us out. He messed up big time. With Eve, and, and they messed up big time. So he came back and he was back again. He put everything back in place. So make him have a chance to be with him forever in glory. That was intent to live forever on this earth. But what happened? He messed the enemy. He's messed it up. The, the devil came as a snake and lightened him. Like the, the, uh, the first earth, he destroyed, he destroyed the first second one, he destroyed with water. Now he's going to destroy it with fire. And that's going to happen according to Peter. But you're going to be forever in glory in the new heaven in Jerusalem. You're going to come back down with him, man. So I'm going to stop praying. Praise the Lord. I want you to pray, honey. God bless. Pray, pray for the opening of the service. I will touch those out there. Go ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, I, I thank you so much. I pray for this morning. I just want to love you and give you the praise and glory for the good that you do in our lives. I thank you so much, Father, for waking us up and giving us another day to you be glory and honor. I praise you and thank you, Lord God. I pray that you continue to glorify your name and have your way in our lives. Use the messenger and his message. Use the saints to pray according to your will, according to the Holy Spirit. And Father, we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, Sylvia, good morning, praise the Lord. I want you to pray for uh, those who are watching Zoom. They could be part of the uh, gathering here, praise the Lord, to message the light. They could hear the word of God. They could hear, be part of the prayer meeting. Go ahead. Unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. Father, good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And, um, Father, thank you, my Lord, for this day, Lord, that we are gathered here, Father, in your name and unity. Seeking your face, Lord, seeking your word. Father, and I pray for those who are joining our um, meeting this morning, Father, that they may be blessed, that they may be transformed by your word, Father, by your Holy Spirit, that they may grow spiritually, my Lord, that they may be drawn closer and closer to you, my Lord, every single day. Father, that we may continue to seek you early in the morning, Father that we may find you, Lord, that we may become closer and closer to you. Father, look at those who cannot be here this morning, Father. I just ask that your, your blessing upon them, Father, that whatever it is that they're doing, my Lord, 
that it be done according to your will. If they, they need doors that need to be open, Father, that you open the doors. If they're shut, doors that need to be shut, Father, that you shut them. Father, I just pray that everything is going well with them, my Lord, that, they, that in our next gathering, Father, that we may be together in unity, seeking your purpose and your plan, Father. And uh, I just ask you to, to bless our meeting. Uh, let your Holy Spirit minister to us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. What says in Psalm 42? As the deer panted after the water broke, so pant my soul for you, O God. My soul just forgot for the living God. When should I come and pray before God? My tear has been my food day and night. Food, my food day and night. Paul continued to say to me, where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour my soul with me. But I used to go, if you go with the, with the multitude, you want to get to the, to, into the house of God with a voice of joy and praise. With the multitude that kept the pilgrimage feast. Why are you so cast down on my soul? Why are you so disappointed with me? But open guy for our year will praise him for the help of his countenance. For my God, my soul is cast down with me. Therefore, I will come. remember you from the land of Jordan, from the highs of Herodon, from the hill of Mezzarah. He called them to deep on the ocean of the waterfalls. All your ways, fellows, have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and the night his soul should be with me. Praise be to God on my life. I will say to God, my rock, for you have forgot you have forgotten me, but do you go more because of my press of my enemies? As for the break of my bones, my enemies reproach me. But they say to me, O day, what long where is your God? Why are you cast down all down on my soul? Why are you disappointed with me? Open God for Yahweh praise you. The hope of my conscience, my God. But that is when we go sins, continue worshiping the Lord, continue trusting in God. Do not let go of God's true worship. Do not let go of his word. You're working with God, he's working with you. People can say whatever. The devil can say whatever he wants. People can say whatever they want. Look at God, what he says. He got the final word, amen? I'm going to have BJ, praise the Lord. You're going to come and pray. You're going to pray for the nations. That God will trust the nations, amen? Through Zoom here, through Mrs. Allah, it will be part of this beautiful gathering. Go ahead. Yes, Lord. You said that your gospel should be preached to the world for witness. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, for the for the throne of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that these zooms will reach the uttermost parts of the world. There's still parts of the world that don't even know about technology, Father God, and they have to know about your word. So, Father God, Father God, continue to raise up, raise up the zoom, Father God, to go over nationally, go out there nationally and globally. Get your word, the sound doctrine to the world, so people could be indoctrinated. Doctrine. Break every satanic yoke, Father God. Go to all over. Send us to all those nations of the world. Send us to the Amazon jungle. Send us out there. In Jesus' name. Continue to raise us up for your glory, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And let us fulfill this word. Lord. Let us fulfill it. Lord. We're going to fulfill the Lord in Jesus' name. We're going to continue to go forth in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Oh. We're going to continue to go forth in Jesus' name. You're going to raise us up for your glory, Father God, and you're going to send us forth like an arrow in your hand. And we're going to definitely hit the mark. Yes, Lord. So I thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to have, um, I think I want you to pray for the salvation of souls. I will save the souls, amen. And be convicted through the Zoom meeting. We know regular Zoom meetings, but I'll convict them through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go ahead. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for souls. <clears throat> your word says all souls belong to you, Lord. And um, your word says that the soul, the sinner shall die. I pray in Jesus' name that you uh, glorify your name, that you help the souls, that you change them, that you bring them close to the cross, Lord God. That you bring them to salvation, Lord, because you're Souls need to be saved, Lord. This is why you sent Jesus, so that people could repent and be converted and receive a born-again heart and spirit, and that you can change us. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that uh, save people. This is what I've been asking you for. 
I can act any harder, any stronger. Save the people, Lord. Souls belong to you. And no one could come to you unless you draw them, Lord. And I thank you for the salvation of the souls. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. I thank you for remembering the work of your hand. Have mercy on humanity. I pray. I got it. Right, I'm have In it Jesus' on. name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Tony, uh, uh, Sylvia, I want you to pray. So I want you to pray now for all the families. God will touch the families out there that will be part of the Zoom. God will heal our families and restore our families. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Am I? Yes, I'm here. All right. Please pray for all the families. Go ahead. Okay, give me one second. So, Father, we we uh, come to you, my Lord, um, requesting uh, for families, praying for families, Father. Father, we are asking <clears throat> that your Holy Spirit, Father, um, manifest in a special way, my Lord, in each family. Father, bringing them closer and drawing them closer to you, my Lord. Father, showing them... Um, whatever needs to be restored. Um, <clears throat> Father, I ask you to restore whatever um, damage is, is in any family, Father, whether it be uh, the parents not getting along, my Lord, the children not getting along. Father, you know every situation in every family. And um, I just ask you that a special restoration, Father, over them, um, those who <clears throat> who are in our Zoom meetings, Lord, and and those who uh, the body of Christ that belongs to you, Father, Father, look at those families that are serving you, my Lord. I ask you to draw them to you, my Lord, um, that you bring them either one by one or uh, you know, husband and family together, my Lord. Save at least someone that can draw. Uh, um, attention to their other family members um, of your love, that they can show your love and your salvation and of your mercy and your grace, Lord. <clears throat> so, Father, we just know that you're in the restoration business and, um, and in the healing business, Lord. There's no one like you, my Lord, and I just ask a special blessing over families, Father, that they may be able to examine themselves, that your Holy Spirit ministers in a special way to them, Lord, to show us and show them uh, our faults, my Lord, where, where we fall short, Lord, where we need wisdom, Father, to, to um, use wisdom to mend the, the broken things that are in our families, Lord. So, Father, I just, we trust you, my Lord. We trust your Holy Spirit to guide us, to, uh, to show us, Lord, where we, we lack, where we need correction, Lord, where um, we need uh, to help each other, to lift each other up, Lord. Father, look at those uh, homes that are broken, Lord, and... That there's so much strife, Father. We come against strife. We bind it in the name of Jesus, Lord. I ask you to send your peace over the families, Lord. And um, that you may open up their eyes, the eyes of their hearts, my Lord. And understanding that comes from you to see, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> wickedness and, and things that are not of you, my Lord. That they may be able to examine the things that are going on. Uh, that you open up their eyes to sin, Lord, that you open up their eyes to, to wickedness, to things that are not righteous, Lord. Open up their eyes, their spiritual eyes, Lord, that they may see in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, and send a special healing 
over them, Lord, and draw them closer and closer to you, Father. I pray for the entire world, uh, every single family, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want you to pray for the sick, both the sick of supposed to spiritually. There are sick people in the church that are sick spiritually, man. And I'm going to tolerate that. I'm going to people are sick. You got to be you got to be healthy. You got to be healthy in the spirit. You're full of sick. In other words, if you got, you got sick, there's uh, all kinds of uh, doubting and fear and, uh, and, and always doing things should be doing, saying things should be saying. You're sick. You're not healthy. You know, you're doing, you're doing, you're going backwards, you're not going forward. The guy going to person is full of sickness. You got to be healthy to administer to others. Go ahead. Yes, Lord. So, Father Lord, you said that our bodies are the temple. And the case of the are not the temple. So, Father, our temple, that means you dwell in that temple. Anything that's not planted or by you, up, rooted, get it out of there, Lord. We get out, we take out blood disorders, cancers, body aches, fevers. Uh, anybody that's sick spiritually, Lord, heal them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No weapon that is formed against uh, the temple of God shall prosper, Father God. Our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and the gates of hell shall not fell against it, Lord. You said that healing is the children bread and we can get that bread, Father God. You said that you will bring in health and a cure, Father God, an abundance of peace and truth, Father God. You said if we drink anything deadly, it shall not harm us, Father God. Your word conquers all, Father. And Father, we just pray for a healthy mind, healthy body, healthy spiritually all the way around, completely whole, Father. I pray for wholeness of the body, wholeness of the physical, the mind, the spirit, everything we hold according to your word, Father. Heal us according to your word, Father, that we can go out and ministry in a healthy mind, a healthy body, healthy spiritually. In Jesus' name we pray, Father God. Amen. Amen. It says uh, on Psalm 47. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout to God with the voice of trump. For the Lord Most High is awesome. The Lord Most High, yes, he is the great king over the earth. He will subdue the people under us. All the nations under our feet. He will choose our inheritance for us. We got inheritance he's going to choose for us. He is excellent on Jacob, whom he loves. God gives, God has gone up with a shout. The Lord is with a sound of his trumpet. Singing praise to God, singing praise. Singing praise to our king and singing praise. For God is the king of all the earth. Singing praise on singing, singing praise with understanding. So you gotta understand we're coming for the Lord. Many don't have understanding. So they don't understand what you're doing. So they, 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 God won't accept that. Gotta be understanding because there's blockage. The flesh especially gotta die. No fish will go in his presence. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of his people have gathered together. The people of of the God of Abraham, the shield of the earth belongs to God. He is greatly excelled. That's the great God we serve, my God. We're talking about what uh, we be talking about his name, amen. Elohim, the uh, Shaddai, the Almighty, awesome one. Man. Now we're gonna have now um David, I want you to pray for the backsliders out there, thousands of them. God's calling them back. They out there praying all kinds of stuff and they then his likes of them. He has uh, tampering with them, he has seduced them. He has manipulated them, and they fall into traps. But God's calling back to repent of the madness, to come back to his, to his presence, come back to him before it gets too late. But the enemy wants to kill them. He wants to destroy them. His methods to kill them, take them to hell, and I don't want that. That's what says John 10, 10, the thief when he comes to kill, soon to destroy, but I come to give abundant life. Amen? Go ahead. Father, well, in Jesus' name, I love you, Lord. Lord, the backslider, the backslider came and walked with you and knew you and walked with you, learned of you. And something happened in their walk that they became cold and they no longer had the desire to walk with you. Or they became conformed to this world. And in their mind, they think they're serving you because that's what the enemy does. He lies to people. He makes them believe that they can go in a religious way and still live for you. But the truth is that they backslide and they stop doing what you call them to do. They become to compromisers. They compromise in 
simple things and then the enemy entraps them and when they come to look they're, they're in such bondage Lord but the good thing is that your word says that if a righteous person falls seven times seven times you will lift them up and father in the name of Jesus right now I pray that you change the heart of the backslider that you bring the backslider back to yourself that you glorify your name in the life of the backslider lord father nothing's impossible for you your word tells me that you are married to the backslider and i ask you father in the mighty name of your son jesus of nazareth have mercy on the backslider your word says that you leave the 99 sheep to look for the one and in the name of jesus Restore, heal, change, bring back the backslider, our sons and our daughters that were raised in your gospel and walked away from your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Number right. again, praise the Lord. So if you was our sorry, I want you to pray for the government. Yes, this government. I'll be having scandals going on with the government promo. All the scandals we're hearing in the news that it's going on. All the sexual harassment stuff. You know what's going on? Everybody's being attacked. Everybody's being said that he's going to take him out. When you got knows a mess, so let's pray for the leaders of the nation. Pray for the president, especially. That God will lead them. That God will take out any any crookedness, anything that's out of proportion to so the right people. Amen. That God will take out, expose those out of order to the right people. So people don't have to be more. That's what it says in Proverbs. Uh, when the wicked and good and people want more, people want more. We don't want that, amen. We want a righteous government so everybody could be safe and sound. Anything could be enclosed on the enemy's fishes and overseas, especially the borderlines. Or well, the enemy will sneak in with his madness and destroy the nation. That's what he wants. And he's doing certain things in the nation without, you know, we can have a weak nation, we need strong leaders. But if we got strong leaders, this is going to be okay. Now, if we got weak leaders, the nation's going to get weak. And when they're being targets for the enemy, amen. We don't want that. So the church got to pray that the government will raise up good leaders and the government will be established in God's ways, not the enemy's ways. Go ahead. So, Father, your word says in Psalm 106.3, Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. So, Father, we put our nation, Father, and all nations before you, my Lord. <sighs> Father, we know that um, that you um, have all authority, Father, um, and that you have instituted uh, authorities um, over our nations, my Lord. And um, I just pray for every single nation, my Lord, that um, that uh, you place uh, the right people in. in in, in authority, my Lord, um, those who can lead us into uh, righteousness, Father, to follow your um, authority, my Lord. Father, touch the hearts and the minds of those who are in power, Father. Convict them of their uh, wrongdoing, my Lord, of their sinful ways. And draw them closer to you, my Lord. Father, I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus, my Lord, to break all the, the, the destruction and madness that's going on um, with people that are not doing your will, Lord. Father, we know that one day you will judge those who, who do unrighteous things, my Lord, and everything is in your hands. But I just ask, Father, that you please um, govern um, those who are in authority in a righteous way, Father, uh, help us to rise up for righteousness. Help uh, those who are in authority to rise up for righteousness, Father. Give them the will and the power to continue to fight for what is uh, right, for, for uh, righteousness in, in all governments, Lord. Um, we know that this is a, a really uh, 
a really hard spiritual battle that's going on right now um, between um, good and evil, Lord. We can see it, Lord. It's it's just it's vividly right in front of us, Lord. I just ask you to open up the eyes of those who who vote, Lord, that they may see the the wickedness, Lord, that when they vote, that they can make the right choices to try to pick the people who are are seeking um, righteousness, Lord, to to do what is right before you, my Lord, and um, to uphold uh, righteous laws, Lord. And not laws, laws that are sinful, uh, that are towards the enemy, Lord. W right now, lawlessness is, is, is going rampant, Lord. Father, I just ask you in the mighty name of Jesus to push lawlessness back, Lord. Father, we know that your word says that when lawlessness comes, uh, the Antichrist is coming after that, Lord. I just also ask you to prepare our hearts and our minds and that the body of Christ ri ri rises up, Lord, to, to seek you and to pray and to intercede for those who are leading our nation and, and all nations, Lord. Father, we entrust you with everything, Lord. It is not um, by what we see. It is not by what... Um, but what moves around us, Lord, but but we know that you're always working behind the scenes, Father. Help us to seek your word. Help us give us understanding of your word so that nothing will catch us by surprise, Lord. We are waiting for your for, for your um your coming, Lord. And we just ask you to prepare us, prepare our minds, our hearts, um, our spiritual uh, armor and our spiritual sword, Father, for the things that are to come, Lord, they're in your word. And um, we trust you. We trust you um, in every area of our lives, Lord, especially to guide those in authority. And uh, we ask you to, Father, just bless our president, Lord, and those in authority that... Um, that they do what is right for the people and the right standing before you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Right. I'm going to have, honey, I want you to, amen. Okay. Honey, I want you to pray for the marriages. God will bless the marriages. So much things going on in the marriages. That God will restore the marriages, amen. Hey, Sister Jenny, praise the Lord. Welcome to Zoom, praise the Lord. Uh, Jeanine, praise the Lord. Um, I want you to pray that God will heal the marriages. And, and take out any arguments and anything that's being contrary to each other because they are working harmony. But if disagreement brings clash, it brings a lot of division, it brings a lot of problems, and the, and the kids are watching all that. You don't want that. That's what happens. A lot of families are being destroyed and hurts the Lord. And they're not, they got to they gotta ask the Lord, they got to add the Lord to their marriage. You got to be a guiding day in the midst of a marriage. Without God, they're going to survive. You might as well pray for the marriage. It's good. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just raise up the marriages to you, Lord God. I, I ask you, Lord God, to glorify your name in the life of the marriages, Lord God. Help the marriages, Father, in Jesus' name. Only you can restore and help the marriages, Father. We praise you and give you glory for the marriages, Lord God. I thank you for my marriage. I thank you for our unity together, Lord God. I pray that uh, we could continue to glorify your name, Lord God, in our marriage, Father. I thank you, Lord, because it's your will to save marriages and, and to multiply marriage, to increase marriage, to, to heal marriage. Lord, you, you, you're such a good God, Lord. I thank you for the marriages, Lord. I thank you so much for the marriages. I thank you, Lord God, for helping the marriages walk together in unity, Lord God. I thank you so much, Lord, for the marriages, Father. Without you, Lord, we cannot do anything. We need you to continue to help the marriages walk in unity, provide for their, for their financial needs and Whatever it is that they're doing, Lord, I pray that they pray together more, that they be 
more sensitive to each other's need without screaming at each other, without obligating other people to do something, everything, Father, in marriage, that it may be done in love, Lord. I pray, Lord God, because only you can help the marriages, Lord God, that they both walk in agreement. And Father, I pray for, for your Holy Spirit to just lead and guide us, Lord God, because Father, you, you're a righteous God and, and you tell marriages how to act, how to walk, how to talk, how to speak to each other. You teach marriages everything. You teach the husband how to love the wife and the wife how to respect and honor her husband, Lord God. You teach the husband how not to be bitter, the wife not to be bitter. You teach them how to yield to one another, submit to one another, Father. Lord, I also pray for their children and I pray for 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 finances, Lord, because nowadays things are not easy. I'm actually grateful that uh that you provide always. And that in uh when it seems like things are not gonna come through, you always come through for us. So I thank you, Lord, and I pray that every single married person has the same heart's desire, the same purpose in life, which is to seek you with their whole heart and to minister to others through their lives and through their marriage. So I thank you, Lord. I give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop here. Praise the Lord. I'm going to enter the book. Uh, uh, foundation Bent to Theological Book. Amen. We've been talking all this whole time on the after the praise. we talking on the doctrine of God. Amen. And uh, we are we still here, praise the Lord, uh, teaching the book of Mexico Theological. And God wants to speak to his people. And um, I got a word for each one of us, amen. Good morning, how are you? And uh, if you have a pencil and pen, I want you to get a pencil and pen before I start. You can write down the information, so you the scriptures I give out, praise the Lord. That's, that's where we stay on Jehovah, uh, this Kenui. All this time we're talking about all the names of God. We've been doing Jehovah Elohim. He's the most, uh, he is the, praise the Lord, the creator of heavens and the earth. Jehovah Jireh, provider. Jehovah Rapha, healer. Jehovah Nisi, a banner, victorious one, fight for us. Jehovah Shalom, he's our peace. Jehovah Rady, he's our shepherd. That's what we spoke about, Jehovah, this Kenui. He's our, our righteous. The Lord is our righteous. Amen. So we're talking about Jehovah. The Sephora, Seth, Seth, who is his name, the King of Glory. Jehovah is uh, is S A B A O T H. Jehovah Sophat, Sophia, I can't pronounce that well. Sophat, amen. And he's the King of Glory. So I'm going to start reading, praise the Lord. I'll be pleased. We have a pencil and pen. Where can everybody just zoom? We'll write down those scriptures or whatever I got through the spirit, you write it down, amen. So I'm going to start, praise the Lord. Number eight, so we talk on Jehovah Sephora. For, for, for him. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts, Jehovah said before him. Look at He is the king of glory. Let's go to, the, uh, to Psalms 24, verse 10. Almost done with the names of God. After we do the names of God, we're going to do the attributes of God. What is after you? God is one God, but he got different attributes. He got different things that comes out of him. He got the God, God's son, God, the Holy Spirit. He's the God of wisdom, revelation, other words. Amen. But also, we could go forth in life and, and abundance. Uh, Psalms 24, verse 10. As for the breaking of the bone, as a, as a breaking of the bones, uh, you say to me all day long, where is your God? She don't say, where is your God every day? Where is your God? God is everywhere. God is present. But that's what happens when we don't seek the Lord. We're going to question the Lord. If people question the Lord, who is God? Where is God? Is God is a woman? God is a force or a there's no knowledge of God there. But when we see God, God's going to read to us who he is through his spirit. But you got to be born again. Flesh and blood. And flesh and blood can understand things of God because this book, is, this book is spiritual. This book is spiritual. The word of God is spiritual. That's why you got to be spiritual to understand the word of God. That's what Paul said uh, to be kind of mind is dead, but to be, uh, to be, uh, to be, to be, uh, to be kind of mind is dead. 
So when many people are going to churches, they're going up to the understand the word of God. Nobody's explaining to them who God is. So they, 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 they don't understand the word of God. You gotta be, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> you gotta be in a spiritual church where God's spirit is manifesting himself to understand the things of the Lord. So God is alive and well. This is song, uh, 1 Samuel 1, chapter 1, verse 3. This man went up from, from his city to worship, sacrifice to the Lord, the host of Sholo. That's another name. Also, two sons of Eli, Hippinus and Phineas, the priests of the Lord, were there. So they went to worship the Lord. Uh, this is um, some, uh, sons, of, uh, sons of, of, uh, of one of the men of God here in 1 Samuel. They were priests of the Lord. And they went to worship the Lord. And, uh, and that's what happened. You got to come before the Lord in spirit and truth, amen, to worship him. Look what says, Elijah, Elijah find, he was found of the Lord, a host, surrounded his, by his, his people, time attacked by the enemy. So he, let's go look at this great story. Let's go to 2 Kings quickly, went to the scriptures. 2 Kings chapter 6, and the great prophet Elijah, the whole portion prophet of God, worked with the great man of God, Elijah. He would see, he would see a double portion of uh, his anointing upon his life. Now he was saying his heart, the, the, the city was uh, besieged by the enemy, it was surrounded by a lot of, by the chariots of the enemy. And over here, he's over here instructing the king to, to, to strike the ground seven times with the arrow. He's about to die, he's dying, he's sick. But he's, at the same time he's instructing the man of God what to do. Let me go to Second Kings chapter, uh, chapter 6, verse 13 and 17. So he said, go, this is it. And he said, go and see where he is. I may send it, get him. And it was told, they saying, surely he is in Doha. And therefore he will send horses and chariots and great armies. See there, came up by mighty, surrounded the city. I mean, surrounded the whole city. Look at this. Uh, and, when he, and when the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning, Early he went out. There was an army surrounding the city and the horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what should we do? Then the prophet said, well, He answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. The way he's telling him, Wow, it's more with us than with them. Then he likes to go to the prophet there. He likes to pray and say, Oh Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And when the Lord opened the eyes of his young man, his servant, I was get his eye. He saw, behold, the mountain behind in front of the enemy, behind in the mountain, was full of horses and chariots. And fire all around Elijah. Plus the God, the God was protecting, the God of glory was protecting his servant, the prophet. He was surrounded by all his armies to come and get him. But what happened? He said, Open the eyes of my servant. He could see what's behind the, behind the mountain up there. He saw his heavenly host and five chariots of fire to protect him. Don't you know we got protection and heavenly horses protecting us? They're all around us. He's, he said, he's the king of glory. He's he protected us. He says, in the sun, the angel of the Lord camps around those that fear the Lord. He encamps. If you walk with the Lord, God's going to camp around you. But you're not fearing the Lord, he ain't going to camp around you. What's in camp around you is the enemy, the devil himself, with all his demonic powers to oppress you, to hurt you, to torment you, and take you to hell. That's what he wants, the devil. Paul said, you know, rest against flesh and blood, but against the prince of power and power, rules and wicked spirit in high places. We fight against different ranks. But thank God, as a child of God, we're not alone in this battle. So then I'm talking about Jehovah's Sabbath, the God who is the king of glory. There's no one like the king of glory. God is all alone. Amen? So now we're going to do scriptures. Praise the Lord. We got a pencil and pen. I repeat. Go write it down. Let's go to Psalms 24 on this king of glory on Jehovah's Sopho. What is it mean by Jehovah? Uh, Psalms 24. Verses 7 and 8. Look what it says on this great name of the Lord, what, what he presents. Lift up all your heads, all your gates. That's talking about us. Lift up your heads, everlasting doors. The king of glory should come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty, mighty in battle. That's the guy you serve, my God. He's alive and well. He's coming in through. He's coming back to get us out of here sooner or later. He don't want anybody to, 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 to perish, but all come to repentance. Once he leaves this earth with his people, it's going to be giving the earth to the Antichrist for seven years, three years and a half. It's going to be hell on earth. It's going to be horrible, man. Well, this man say he's Christ, but he's not Christ. He's an anti. He thinks God's goodness, God's holiness. And he's going to deceive the world by him. He's going to see the world's going to be deceived by him. He's going to lie to them. And they're going to fall to his trap. 
and you're gonna receive a brand called the number 666, the mark of the beast. And you receive the mark, you cannot buy and sell without a mark. It's gonna be cashless society. Money ain't gonna exist in that period, in that time. But we're heading to that, to that, to that, to that room. We're heading to that time. Everything's getting ugly out there. The money scales, everything, the proportion of the, of the nations, everything's going crazy. Money's being drained out, pushing in waste and waste and waste and waste. People are going to, to spending billions of dollars to go to space, man. It's billion what he did recently. Spending money like nothing, man. And the same thing, people are starving around the world. But once God gets his people out of here, God's going to do what he's going to do because he's got alone, man. He's the king of glory. Psalms 29, verse 3. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over, over many waters. He thunders. Every time you hear thunder, it's God's voice. That's you hear a big blast. Boom. This, this is a regular thunder. They understand that because they, they count on their willy. When you spiritual, you know, God got a voice. God can manifest everywhere he wants. When Elijah was in a cave, he heard a big earthquake. He heard a shaking, all this stuff. And then God came to him with a little, a little small voice to Elijah. And God said, what are you doing here, Elijah, with a small voice? When God speaks to us, he speaks through, through his, the Holy Spirit. It's from the Father to the God, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and speaks to us. When he got for us, we got to have a tender view when God speaks. That's like I said, my sheep know my voice, and spirit should not follow. Do you know the voice of the Lord? It's right in here, the word of God. And the more you develop the spiritual man, the God's going to speak to you. You're going to hear his voice. But the word of God's going to develop you if you get into that word. That's what says Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing him the word. What do you hear? Are you hearing all the things, fictions, and nonsense? Or are you hearing the word of God? Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word, hearing, hearing, hearing. Why we walk by faith, not by sight. And it's a lot of sight people inside churches. Be surprised to tell you that, man. They're more, they're more carnal than spiritual. And God ain't going to tolerate that. And they didn't say that God said, God didn't say nothing. They got to show me, yeah, God show you nothing. There's all lies, man. But the guy ain't going to tell me nothing about he's in the flesh. God said, you know, by the color of the skin, you're going to say, by their fruits, you're going to know them, by their fruits. Why? Because the buns of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And if you walk in the spirit, God, he's going to tell you he's a liar. She's for real. He's for real. You see that? That's we cannot believe every spirit. That's what it says back in the epistle, John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not bully your spirit. Try the spirits that come from the Lord. Write it down. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Read it. We have a chance. Everything that says amen, amen, glory, you're going to go to heaven. Everything else, Jesus, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. I can't get rid of that, man. We got thousands of people going to all these great concerts. Nothing wrong with that, but at the same time, there's no commitment to the Lord. There's no commitment. Everything's lip service. Oh, Jesus, glory. Oh, I love you, Lord. It's a joke, man. I ain't no joke, man. That's what it says in the prophet Hosea. They come as my people. They worship as my people. Their heart is far from me. I ain't going to tolerate that. Amen? Let's go back now to John chapter 11, verse 40. Gospel of John chapter 11, verse 40. Jesus said to her, If it did, 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 did I not say to you that if you will believe, believe you will see the glory of God? You see, God told us to this to this woman here, uh, Lazarus, that was Mary, uh, Martha. She got her brother has died recently. He died. Let me start in 38. Jesus again, again grown in himself and came to the tomb. It was a cave and the stone by light is against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stones, Martha and Martha, his sister. Uh, what, what, what uh, okay, Martha and the sister him what, what, was the dead, said to her, Lord, by this time you should have, it's his stench, he has been here for four days. And Jesus said to her, to the both of them, Then I say to you that if you will believe, you should see the glory of God. And he continued, Why well, he said, Take away the stone, the big stone around the tomb. And he came, he called him out, Come out, Lazarus. And he gave back the light to Lazarus. He came back, he, came, he started walking again, giving back his life because he is the resurrection, he is the life. What I got, we ain't going to survive. So it says back in the book of Acts, we move, because we move, we have a being. That's what, what Peter said. And here we move, we have a being. We have a breath. Old man can go take a bit like that, a lot of breath, and take us out of here if he wants. So what says in problem wisdom, the, the, uh, the life is like a, like a candle. You know? It's like a candle in the light, right? And once you blow that candle, that's it. Just like that, like a candle. James said we like a viper of water. It's just like that. Once it's gone, that's it. That's what we got to take opportunity we have in God saying we got close to be right with him, walk with him, because we couldn't know what tomorrow's promise to none of us. 
everything is, is being fulfilled before our eyes. God is coming back for his people sooner or later. What says it? When I said to be occupied till he comes back, he wants everybody to come to know him. He wants the master of the nation. He wants the, all these occultists, all these luminary, all these secrets to try to know that he's like God alone. And he wants to win some out of those groups. And the Amazon jungle, all these traps, the American Indians, all of them. He wants to save all these voodoo and voodoo, all they do, all these witchcrafts. He wants to save the European nations, the, the South American, the Asians, the African nations. That's what he came for. When the last gentle get converted, then he's going to say, that's it. Son, go get, go get your people. He painted across the cattle. It's going to be just like that in a moment of time. I wish it's going to be in a two kilometer night at the last trumpet. And if you're walking in the spirit, you're going to hear that trumpet when it sounds on heaven. That means God is here for us. It's getting us out of here. You're going to, you're going to be so rejoicing, man. You're going to be taking up first the dead in Christ by the brothers and the brothers and sisters in the cemetery. You're going to rise up again. That's coming. Gonna be a lot of empty uh, uh, cemetery graves. What happened to all these people around the world? They disappear by the billions. It's over here in Europe and Africa and Asia, South America, America. You're gonna see that's gonna happen. God's giving everything's being prophetically fulfilled. Everything's being little by little. Everything's one prophet is being fulfilled, and he's still waiting for the people to come to know that he's God alone, the God of glory, Jehovah, so forth. Okay. Um, let's go now to Acts chapter 7, verse 2. And he said, Mr. One, and the high and the high priest said, Are you these things so? And he said, Brethren and fathers, listen, this is when Stephen was uh, stoned. He about to get stoned. The first martyr, young Stephen was full of God's power. He was telling him to explain to him the whole council of God, the whole life of Israel, of the Jews. He said, Brethren and fathers, listen, the God of glory. Okay, so you see, the guy is called the God of glory, so all so forth. It appeared to our father Abraham. He was in Mesopotamia and before he did war in Hebron. She explained to me. She read the whole chapter, chapter seven of the book of Acts, man. The way he came, he said he came with his wisdom. He was so full of God. He had a face of an angel. He was full of faith and power. He did signs and wonders. At the end of the about to steal the first martyr, he said, hey, look, I said, oh, he's a type of the Lord. Father, forgive them what they do. And he went to sleep. And they stoned to death. Uh, Revelation uh, chapter 19, uh, verse 1. All these things I heard in the loud voice of great multitude in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation, what? And glory. What was so for you here? And honor and power belongs to the Lord our God. Ooh, my God, that's what's going to happen in heaven. We're going to exalt the Lord. We're going we're gonna to be as a family together. We're going to worship the Lord on that great day. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. What do you think we hear in this earth? We practice how to worship God when we come to churches. If you go to a true church and worship God's spirit, true, that's what you're doing now. You're practicing, you're rehearsing to the next level in that glorious, in that glorious day. You're going to be worshiping your Lord and Savior. Michael, he's the one who took us out of the hell. He took us out of, out of the devil's trap. He took us out of the devil's kingdom to his kingdom. We blood wash. Wow. Look at this. Um, Lord. Habakkuk chapter 3. Why not prophet have a cool? Uh, chapter 3, verse 4. His bright is like the light. Look at that. Let me start in, in, in 3. God came from Tama, the holy one from Mount Havran. His, gl his glory covered the heavens. Woo. The earth is full of his praise. His bright was like the light. It's glorious. Look at that. He had rays flashing from his hands. Then his power was hitting. Before it was the pestilence and the fear follow his feet. Look at that. He stood and measured the earth and looked and satur the heaven nations and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The petrol hill bowed. They all got a bow to him. His ways are everlasting. I saw the tents of God and caution. How did we saw this? And affliction. The curtain of the headlands of the media and trembled. And so on. I want to read it, but that's what happened. When God comes, he does whatever he wants. He manifests his glorious. His then came out flesh of glory, my God. I could imagine when, when, when Moses came down, he saw God's glory. He was, he was so, so much time, spending time with God, Moses. When he came down, the people couldn't look at him. He was so full of glory, he had to put a veil over his face. He had to cover himself. He was so much glory coming out. He went, oh, Moses, my God, where you was? It's 40 days with the Lord. He spent with the Lord. That's so you when you spend with the Lord, your God's covering you with his glory. 
And the devil sees that. He runs away. He can't see that. He gets blind. Demons go crazy. You see that? That one is with his glory. He wants to overshadow you with his presence. Like he did with Mary. She was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. She bent the son of the living God. She was so full of God. She bent God's son. And she was up there in 120 in the upper room with the disciples, the apostles, and Martha, all the women of God. They were all seeking on God's full of his spirit upon them. The promise he was going to call the Holy Spirit and they have been to Costco and it happened. And so he's going to do more, but he's going to pray more of his spirit. That's why he's told the prophet in the last hour, should pour my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters are going to prophesy. You're only going to dream dreams upon my hand, my mace. I'm going to pour my spirit in those days, said the Lord. He's going to pour it out. So expect him. And whenever God wants to do, he's going to do it. If you see a vessel is humble before the Lord, somebody's working with spirit and truth, pay the price. He's going to pray, raise up the person, fill him with his glory. And send for to blast the trumpet out there. Say, God is coming. That's it. Because they mock him. Say, well, I keep going. Shut up. He's going to continue saying that to, by the Lord. God's going to back him off. God is speaking his last words to the human race. For the human race is about to be judged, about to be given to the Antichrist. You could be with the Lord in the glorious uh, rapture, or you could stay with the Antichrist in the great tribulation. It's up to you. We got a choice. I want you to spend eternity with the Lord, not with the devil in hell, in the lakes of fire. Hell is, this is not hell. Hell is under the earth. It's a real battle going on as I told you for souls as I told you. It's a real battle around as I told you. It's a real battle. And the and that was out to destroy human race. You can say Psalms 20, chapter 5, verse 24. You said, surely the Lord our God has shown his glory. His name is Jehovah's so forth. His greatness. We have heard his voice from the midst of the fire. Lord, he spoke through the fire. We have seen the day that God speak to man as he stood this day. He spoke to man. Clear. When he was speaking to Moses, people heard him. God speak to Moses. Like I'm speaking to you. So then God will speak to you in a certain way. Not going to tell me what he would do if he wants to. But he speak to us through the Holy Spirit. You hear his voice. Through the word. Through, his, through, his, through prophets. When he speaks to you, say to the Lord to your real life. He's talking to you. He got a word for you. He got a, he got a mission for you. He got a design purpose for each one of us. He got a future for each one of us. We call it to Jeremiah 20, verse 11. Let me go there again. Jeremiah 29. Uh, verse 11. For well, I know the thoughts I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. <clears throat> to give you a future and a hope. You see that? That's God's purpose. Each one of us. That's the God we're serving. Many got they want a good future, but but I got nothing on so far. I don't care. It's good to get educated, but it don't mean nothing. They can get a great education. They can have money saved for future reference. They want to buy a good house, a car. It don't mean nothing, man. But that God, that's what God told you. Without me, you can't do nothing. God is more beyond blessings, bro. He's beyond all these things of this material life world, man. So temporary. After they smack it, after they use it, after they try, it, after they they, they 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 eat it up, whatever man, chew it and throw it out. The same. We're going back to the same old thing over again, over again, over again. Like a cycle. But in God's kingdom, there's no cycle. It's more things to be manifested to each one of us. He wants to give us more blessings beyond the world could give. Things you cannot buy in no market. Things you cannot buy in no, in, in no Wall Street. It's from above. We got it from the, from the heavenly. Go to James. He's the father of lights. Which on, which on, um, we go there. There's no shadow turning. James chapter 1, what it says? Uh, I want to bless his people, but his people are paying a prayer. Look what it says in chapter 1 of James, verse 17. James 1, uh, chapter 17. Every good gift, every perfect gift, you hear that? It's from above, from heaven itself. And it comes down from the Father of lights. Whom there is no revelation or shadow of turning. You see that? He wants to bless us beyond our dreams. But well, we got to seek his presence. We got to walk with him in spirit and truth. Certain things the rich business out there have, they, they don't have. They cannot buy nowhere. I don't care how much business they have in the bank. It's from above. It's given to his God's children. 
God wants to make us spiritual wealthy. They could be wealthy billionaires. We could be wealthy, wealthy spiritual billionaires, sincerities. But we got to continue growing grace and knowledge. That's what says 2 Peter 3, 18, to grow in grace and knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To grow in grace and knowledge. This is back in the third epistle of John, verse 2. For God said, we should both teach you prosper, be in hell, as I so prosper. Prosperity starts inside, not outside. See, when you got a greedy spirit, when you got me, myself, and I, I'm this, I'm that, I can do what I want. That's not the spirit of those. That's not rich. It says in the book of religion, they're wretched, they're miserable, and blinded. God said, buy for me some gold so you could be trying to fire. So you could be rich towards me, not to the world. I want you to be rich towards him doing which works. If you give you a couple of bucks, whatever. Because the more you get you out to people, the more you help to do God's project and thing, God's going to multiply your life. I guarantee you that. Spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially. It happened with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <clears throat> they were one of the most blessed people in the earth. Most prosperous. Psalms 18. Let's go there. I pray, I pray you guys writing down information, man. Psalms 18, verses 7 to 15. Read it down. Look at this in verse 7. 17, chapter 18, verse 7 to 15. The earth shook and trembled. The foundation of his hill also quickened while shaking because of his anger. You see, God gets angry. Smoke went out from his nostril. Look at that. It brought the fire from his mouth. Coals were kindled by it. He, he bowed the heaven also and came down with darkness under his feet. He went on a chariot. God rides up in the chariots of heaven if he wants, man. Flew and he flew up on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. Camp, camping around him with dark waters, thick clouds, and sky. From the friends before him, the thick clouds passed by and held stone coals of fire. Talking about his wonders, man. The Lord thundered from heaven, the more sight uttered his voice, and held stones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows what, for what purpose to scatter what the foy, the wicked. Lightning and thunder among this, he banished them. The channels of the sea were seen, and the foundation of the world were uncovered. God, he reveals everything under the world. Everything in secret, he brings to the light. Everything's going to get exposed. He rebukes, O oh Lord. Look, as you rebuke, Lord, the peace lasts of the breath of your nostril. Yes, God comes with judgment, bro. He's going to stop revealing who's who. That's what's back in Peter. Judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. I don't care what church you go, he's going to begin in judgment. And that church is right, the blessing is going to be all over them, man. And they'll prove out now it's out of order. He's going to bring his judgment upon those people. It's going to be horrible. But God going to tell everybody sin. He's going to tell everybody rebellion. He's going to tell everybody people playing church war. Uh-uh. You yeah. cannot play. Many take little things like for granted, especially this right here. That's dangerous, man. But that's their, that's their bidding, brother. That's what they saw. They reap. That cannot be mocked. Psalms 104, verse 1. Psalms 104, verse 1. Bless me, the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh my God, you are great. You are clothed with honor and majesty. Look at that. He's clothed with majesty and glory. So we got to bless his name. The glorious one, the king of glory, Jehovah Thoughtful, my God, we worship. The king of glory. That's what you got to be serving. Ezekiel chapter 1. We're talking the king of glory. Who is this king of glory? Uh, Ezekiel chapter, chapter, chapter 1, Ezekiel, verse 26 and 28. Ezekiel. This is when the prophet was seeing God's glory. God took him in the spirit. Look what he said. And above the firmities over his head was the likeness of a throne. He saw these great creatures with wheels, man. Woo. Appearance like the surface stone. Special stone like that. Likeness of a throne. The likeness of the appearance of a man high upon it. That was sitting in the middle of all that. In his throne. Also from the appearance of his waist upward. I saw it was where the colors of emperor. The appearance of fire around above mm -hmm. it. From the emperors of his waist downward. I saw it was the appearance of a fire. Brightness all around. Whew, man. I think it must be spectacular. We're like, whoa, Lord. Oh, this great manifestation of you, Lord. Look what it says in 28. Like the appearance of a rainbow in the cloud of rainy day, it was the appearance of a brightness around him. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. Man. God manifesting so in a powerful to Ezekiel. So this is who I am, Ezekiel. All my beautiful beings I created, my beings, the cherubims, all these wheels, thousands of eyes. Yeah, these wheels have millions of eyes. Temple of God sees everything. So he says back in Prom, behold the eyes of everywhere, behold the evil and good. He sees everything. He sees what's in hell. He sees all the souls are crying out for mercy. It's too late. He sees all the demonic powers in hell, throwing the hell of the falling angels in the second heaven. He sees each one of us. He sees all of us. He sees the hearts of each man. 
That's what he told Prophet Samuel. I don't look at the appearance of Samuel. I look at the heart. He sees each one of us. He will go each way according to our works. That's what's just back in, uh, in, in, um, in Revelation. I'll take you there quickly. Revelation chapter 22. Look what it says in chapter 22, and starting in verse 11. Look what it says. He was, he was unjust, let him be unjust still. Go ahead. Continue. He was filthy, continue to be filthy. Go ahead. He was righteous, continue to let him be righteous. He is holy, let him still be holy. Go ahead, continue. It's up to you to be what you want to be. But look what he says in 12. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. According to their work. So whatever they sow, they reaping. If you sow good seed, it's for your prosperity, it's for your good. Because you're gonna pro you're gonna prosper, you're gonna be good, but you do the opposite, it's gonna cost you. That's what Paul told the Roman saints, wait till the Romans said. Uh, there's no excuse, there's no, there's no uh favoritism. God still loves his people, but still they gotta get right with the Lord, regardless. Amen. Yeah. Look what it says in chapter uh, two of, is, uh, of Romans. Look what it says in six again. He, should, he will run to each one according to his deeds. Then says seven, eternal right to those by their patience and continue doing good. See what glory, honor, and mortality. Look at that. For good for those. For those who are self-seeking, a lot of the church, my God, do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. Look at that. Instead of righteousness, idiot, foolish, intimidation, and wrath. Look at the results. It's going to end. And tribulation anguish to every soul of man. Who does evil to the Jews first? Always first, because the Jews first come first, always. But the gospel came out of them, and to us, the rest of the world, the Greeks, the Gentiles, and honor, and also honor and, gl honor and glory and honor again. You see the word he goes glory again. Peace to everyone who works good, and to the and to the Jews first, also to the Greeks. But there is no partiality with God. You hear that? We all being judged, everybody. The guy's there in the Lord, guy's watching them too. Because he got a purpose, but he's going to deal with them. They got to choose like we got to choose. My God, Exodus chapter 24. Let's go to Exodus chapter 24, uh, verse 15 and 16. It says Exodus chapter 24, verse 15 and 16. Moses went up to the mountain and God covered the mountain. Whew. For his glory, man. You know what's that, man? You ever seen up those beautiful mountains in the States, man? Yellowstone. All these mountains you go up to, to, uh, um, to uh, Arizona, uh, uh, Montana. All these beautiful mountains, my God. Oh, bare mountain itself. You see, uh, it's saying he got covered the mountain with his glory. He came down. Now, the glory of the Lord, you can look at the glory. That's his glory. The glory of the Lord rested in the Mount Zion. He rested. And the cloud covered it. Six days and the seventh day, he called Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Moses, come over here. He started, he had a conversation with Moses, his servant. You see that God wants to come with his glory, he wants to show who he is. But we got to stay in the spirit. We got to go. Wait, that's what saying. No flesh will glory in his presence. And it's a lot of flesh people in the church that say, God said, God didn't say nothing, and they're playing church like a joke. And God ain't going to manifest his idol to none of them, but he's holy all by himself. Uh, Exodus 33, same book, verse 4, uh, 9 to 10. It came to pass when Moses entered the tabernacle. That's what God did with the tabernacle, the church in the desert. Then the pillar of the cloud is descending and stood on the door of the tabernacle. Wow, look at that. And the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the pillars of cloud standing in the tabernacle door. And the people rose and worshiped each man in his own tent. It was the tabernacle was in the middle. And around was a tall tribe and little tents, the tall tribes. And everybody was worshiping the Lord in the tents inside. I said, wow, look at God coming down to us, visiting us. That's what I got to his people when we go to church. When the house is full of God's glory, God visits his people. He starts delivering. He starts impartitioning his life to them. Give them a new idea, a new mission, new idea for his glory. You see that? For the church can handle it because they're in the flesh. And when you're in the flesh, God ain't going to manifest himself at all. God ain't going to compromise with that filthy devil because he's been been destroyed in the world and the flesh. And that's our enemy. We got three enemies, the world, the devil, and the flesh. That's you, yourself, and I. So got to be crucified. Got to be put in crucified on the cross to see God's glory. The more you stay in the flesh, the more you're going to see God. The more you're going to be a carnal Christian. The more God ain't going to do nothing. You're just wasting time. 
thousands of hours wasting time, but you stay in this prayer, God's going to start visiting you, manifesting, delivering, transforming you from glory to glory and faith to faith. Uh, Isaiah chapter 4, verse 5. Then the Lord created created a, above every the willing place among Zion. Look at that. He created the way he wants. Above the assemble of his angels, the cloud, the smoke of the day, and the shining of his flame of fire by night. For all of the glory, there will be a covering. God did whatever he wanted. He covered with his glory, with his fire. Or he's a going to Hebrew, he's a consuming fire. Oh, his love, of course, his love. Also, the other part, he's a consuming fire. He's a God of judgment. He's a God of putting everything back in order. Now, if you don't say, God, people don't say he took God's word. When it was out there, they, they want an easy gospel. Oh, Jesus, go with a guy. Yeah, go with, go with, go with. Jumping around like rabbits, man, like kangaroo. God ain't going to tell you none of that, man. God is going to visit. And God's going to start with the ones behind the pulpit. He's going to visit and talk to him like he did with Moses. Because he's out of order, means the whole church is out of order. If he's doing the, through the will of God, working with God, the whole church is in order. Because he got three people in the church, he got four, five, ten, twenty, whatever, or a million. If that person is right, the whole church, but the church, if the man is out of order, the whole church is out of order. That's what I say. Judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. It's going to work itself out to the great tribulation. Matthew chapter 17. Let's go there. Matthew chapter 17. Uh, verse 5. While he was still speaking, he was with, was with Peter, James, and John. Look what he said, he was with them in the mountain. While he was still speaking, behold, a, a bright cloud overshadowed him. Look at that. And suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Hear him. You see, hear him. That's what said. Satan said, Mary, Mary told him, Hear him. Do not hear me. Hear my son, Jesus. Hear him. Mary's not a solution. You know, people worship. You cannot worship Mary. You got to worship Jesus. She was, she's the woman on, on, on the women who the son of the living God. She's blessed among women. But that's it. She's not a goddess. She's just a chosen vessel by the Lord. She became, a, according to Timothy, she became a vessel of honor to the Lord for the master's use. She was for real. She was like gold, silver, not wood and clay. She was a faithful woman of God and blessed her. You see that? My God. God wants to feel you with your glory. Luke chapter 21, verse 27. Luke chapter 21, verse 27. Then you will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of power. He's coming back in the second coming in great glory. All these things begin to happen. Look up to you. Look up and lift up. God tell us, look up and lift up your heads. Because your redemption is joy near. God said, when you see all these signs in all these signs in the heaven, you're up, you're up in this, look up in the heaven. But he said he's coming back. You gotta keep your I mean, eyes attention. I'm looking up, but he's coming back for his people. He's coming back. He's coming us in the rapture, we're coming back when the second coming back to this earth. Take it away from the earth from the Antichrist. It's gonna be back to God's people. Oh my god. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Matthew 24, verse 30. Then the signs of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Look at that. And then show the shrouds of earth will more. This is what happened in the second coming. He's coming back. And they should see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, power and great glory. Jehovah Sophia. Look at that. You're going to come with all his fullness. But John's going to more. That's going to be tremendous, man. But he's going to show him he's got alone. The thing he didn't exist. He was just a, that he's the man above, that he's a, a big bang theory that he's a he's a he's a she. The dead said the guy's a woman, it's a she, a female. That he's just a force. Uh-uh. He's gonna appear almost again to the world that he's a God alone. That this earth belongs to him, the fullness of all. We can do whatever he wants with this earth. Look at this. Mark chapter 13 again, verse 26. Then they should see again the Son of Man come in the cloud in great power and glory. Mark said the same thing that he's coming back. Because says 27, he will send his angels and gather together his elect. You see that for maybe four queens from the four parts of the earth into the four parts of the heaven. He's going to gather his people. Protect them. He's going to take the other one. Forget about it. From your horrible, man. All you got to know he's going to do in that great day. You got to do is stay faithful. All you got to demand us to stay faithful and true to him. That's it. Now, if you pray in church, 
God forbid, if you walked away from the law and in, de in death strikes in your door, your house, you, you're going to enter eternity. You ain't going to go to heaven. You're going to go straight to hell. This is going to happen. That's what it says back. It's appointed all men to that, but after that's the judgment. You know, people are not crying hell for mercy. It's too late. They walked away from the law like a joke. They say, it's no time for you, Lord. I got no time. No, no, I want to make money, money. I want to go do and fulfill my life for the flesh, everything. But they came and striking the house. Now they all pay the heavy price. It's for shoes. Men, that's what says back in Solomon Proverbs. It's a wasting right to men, but then forth is death. Same point blank. I said, this is back to the Roman sin in the New Testament. For the way, wages of sin is death. So it's wages. They're punching and punching out. But the gift of God is eternal life. They're punching and punching out. Punching and punching out. This is back in Galatians. Sin got to the post of Galatians. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever woman of men saw that, they should be. You see? Second Chronicles chapter 5. Verse 13 and 14. And then it came to the place of Solomon when he created God's temple, the third temple. This beautiful temple he made for the Lord, but the Ark of the Covenant. And then came to pass where the trumpet and the singers watch one and make one some sound to her and praise and making thinking to the Lord. They lift up their voices with trumpet and cymbal and instruments and music and praising the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. For the house of for the house of house of the Lord was filled with his cloud, the full of his glory. So that the priest could not walk, continue to minister because the cloud that was his glory in the midst of them is too much, right? He fell on the floor in the face. That's his presence, man. Woo. For the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. It got so full they couldn't manage to get, get in the floor. Man, that's Jehovah's so full of God, the king of glory. You and me serve. First Kings chapter, uh, let's go to first Kings chapter eight. First Kings chapter eight. Verse 10 and 11. It came to pass when the priest came out, you know, came out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord again. Look at this. Wow. So the priest could not continue to minister because the cloud, the glory of the Lord, filled the house of the Lord. Then Solomon spoke, saying, Lord, this is what we do in you in dark cloud. I had surely built you an excel house, and I pray for you, you could do well forever. See, God cannot do well in no temple. God is God cannot fit in no temple. He, God is so awesome, he cannot fit in his own universe. There's so much glory, man. This universe got billions and God is out there only he knows. With billions of beautiful stars he created for his glory and planets and creatures, whatever. But he fills the whole universe with his glory. And he owns it. He owns it. That's what's back in Colossians. I'll take you there. And chapter 1 of Colossians. And verse 16. What says it? By, what says it in verse 16 of Colossians 1, 16? Let me start in 15. For he is the image of the invisible God. He's the invisible sheep. So that's like a father God. They're identical. They're the same. That's what he told John to the Pharisees. Me and my father won. Me and my father won. He told the, the, the religious devils, the Pharisees, and everybody around him. He's the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created. You see that? That in heaven, that they're in the earth right now, the invisible, we see now in the invisible realm, spiritual realm. You see that? Where they were, this is now the wrecks that God created. We have thrones of angels, dominion, principality, and powers. All things were created through him and for him. Woo! What a God we serve, man. The king of glory. Jehovah Sophia, you see that? He's the God of glory. That's the one we got to continue giving praise and glory. Not to people, nobody. When people are pushed aside, when people take, do their own thing, God is not involved with none of that. I don't want to be part of that. But they ain't going nowhere. When they become an occultist like James Jones, like a, like Terry Koresh, all these occultists, man, said they were they, they blasphemy, said they were Christ himself. And people follow him like idiots, and he got one again in slaughter. Then we had a, a great man that got one time, I believe you know he was, man, but he messed up big time. Great theologian. Uh, you, got, you, you, heard, you guys heard of Family Radio, right? One time, Family Radio in the 80s. Uh, Harold Camping, remember Harold Camping? He was a tremendous theologian. He explained the word back and forth to people, man, on um, different problems. When they said, I, I could predict the Lord's coming, he calculated on his own little mind. He said God was going to come in 1980-something, man. How dare you? God said nobody knows the the hour. And he trying to prophesy, predict God's coming. And he tried, oh, yeah, what happened? It never happened. He had to step down from what he was doing. He's not there no more. Family's not there no more on the radio. It's, it's dropped out. They dropped it out the way. You don't do that, something like that. You crazy, man? He tried to predict God's coming. 
God said, be, look what it says here, matter of fact, in Acts chapter 1. The way God was saying Acts chapter 1 this. Look at this. Look what it says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. Therefore, the disciples came to the Lord. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked the Lord, saying, asked him, saying, Lord, when we, when, Lord, when will at this time you restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to him, it's not for you to know the time or the season when my father has put in his own authority. You see that his own authority, God himself. But you should receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. You should be my witnesses in all Jerusalem, Judea, and Jerusalem, and in the ends of the earth. Don't worry about God when he's going to come back. It's not to do with us. It's not your business, but this man try to do that. That's what, that's what happens when you go beyond the boundary. You got to stay in the word. Do not go off the word of God. Stay in that word. You go beyond the word, you ain't going to see God's glory. Or you're going to bring confusion. You're going to bring problems to people and doubt. Just see those are weak in the Lord. Those are starting the Lord. You see? So it's kind of risky and dangerous. Thank you, Lord. Uh, back to Exodus chapter 40. Exodus chapter 40. Um, verses four, 34 and 35. Exodus chapter 40, 40, verse 34 and 35. And the cloud covered the tabernacle, God spread the God's house in the wilderness. And the meet, meeting of the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle. He can't even able to enter God's servant in the tabernacle meeting. Why? Because the cloud rested upon it. Man, it was heavy, man. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. That was the same glorious power. God used a little man with a little rust to open the sea. Moses and the rest, he got open. <laughs> And they went to dry ground. Man, you can you imagine that spectacular moment. The whole sea congealed, got frozen. They were talking about going to our uh, aquarium, man. They saw all the fishes of the sea, guys, when they passed through the, through, the, through, the, through, the, through the dry ground. They saw all the sea. They saw all those animals, beautiful animals, the shark, the whale. It was congealed. And they saw it through, through the congeal. It was frozen. They looked through the ice. They saw all those beautiful animals waiting to be back in the water. The whole was concealed. It was congealed. And, they, and the God's people look at it and say, wow, look at your daddy and my grandma. Paul, look at them, Lord. Look at those beautiful animals. God was taking his people to get, that was a type of baptism in the Lord. According to a, to a, to a Corinthian, they were baptized in the Lord. They got baptized. Uh, let me take you there. First Corinthians. Look at this. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Bro, my brother, I cannot want you to uh, aware. All our fathers were under the cloud, see on his glory. They came out of Egypt, passed through the sea, the Red Sea Mediterranean. All by ties, look at the prophet. They were all by ties into Moses in the cloud and the sea. They all they sang the same spiritual food. They all drank the same spiritual drink. But they drank of the spiritual rock, and that final that was rock was Christ. You see that? They were in they were, God was they were better where God is. But what happened? They saw God's glory. They were baptized into God. That we get baptized. We get baptized in the Lord. When you baptize, you make it, you're saying you die with the Lord, you resurrect a new, a new creature. This was back in Corinthians, Paul says, any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things pass away, things become brand new. That's what we told back to Nicodemus. Nicodemus, don't you know anything? He said, you must be born again the second time. You came out of your mother, you got to be born a second, for flesh and blood cannot help me the kingdom of God. You got to be born again. And many get born again, but what happened? They're backslidden in a certain way. They're going to do the things of the world. They break the spiritual law, and the enemy comes in grease them. The Holy Spirit, they pass from them. And what happened? You're born again. You stay in that level. You stay in the realm. Continue walking with the God of glory. So he could fill you. He could train you. He could move you and bring you up to his son's image. But many don't want that. It's a parable. They stay for a season. The, the things of the world chokes them. The, 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 the things of the world, everything chokes them. The, 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 the pressure of life. On a parable. Let me find this parable. The parable. Of those who are in the Lord. But what happened, they didn't make it, my brother and sister. They didn't make it for Why? Because they stood faithful to the Lord. Let me find a parable. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Praise you guys being blessed, man. That is good. That is good. What's that verse in the parable? Right, 13. Verse 13. Here it is. It 
Yeah, uh, Matthew chapter 13, write it down. Starting in verse 18. Therefore, hear the parable of the sword. The sword. Anyone hear the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the word, look what it says. Everyone hears the word. This is the first one. Hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. Then the wicked one comes and snatch away the word, the word was sown in his heart. And he who sees, we see the seed by the wayside. You see, those are the wayside people. They don't stay firm. Then comes the other one. He who receives the seed is a stony place. It's the he who, who hears the word and immediately he receives it with joy. That's good. He has no root. You see, he's not rooted and grounded. And so, but it goes only for a while. But when tribulation and prosecution are right because of the word, I mean, they are stumbled. They're on the way. Wayside. But look at this. It's two negative, three negative, one positive. Now, he who receives the amount of thorns is he who hears the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches chokes the word. I mean, they are fruitful. Three negative. Look at the positive. You could be those three negative or be positive. But he who receives the seed on the good ground is he who receives hear the word. And understands it, you see, for God opened the mind to the scriptures. Who indeed is on the true shepherd, true understanding shepherd, is giving understanding to the people. It's not hurting. That's what back in Jeremiah, I will give shepherds out the Maha to free your understanding and knowledge. Yes. Look at this. To hear the word, understand, who indeed bear fruits, produces such, uh, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. You could be the three negative and the one positive, but you could be on the right fellowship, the right. Pastor, to teach you guys, go forth and God, not the devil in the world. And it's a lot of children full of hurnings, brother. Taking advantage of the money, taking advantage of what to do this with them so you could take make money out of them. And people, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man, hey, man. That is not the gospel. That's exploding people, taking advantage of people. Talk about human trafficking. That's what we're doing inside the church, spiritually, to people. And people are asleep. Instead of waking from this dream. That is not the kingdom of God. That is not the house of God. I repeat, Paul says it again. Paul says, but Paul says to the Corinthian, Mark takes the trans like an angel of light, and he got his false ministers. That's to get you and me. That's to stand on the right leadership, the right preparations. You can get trained, you get more in shape, disciple. And the more you come, the more you learn, the more you're going to grow. It's up to you, it's up to me. That's when I was young, I stood on the elders, man. The elders, they, were, they know the whole world, they know the whole word of God. They tell me, like, this is how it is, this is how it is. You see the tears, you see the tribulation, what they went through, they talk about it, you hear them, and you learn. And it's, you say, wow, that's how it is, man. I could take that, if I take that pathway, it's going to be easier for me. But I think this one's going to be hard for me. So I choose the way of the right, the way I could, I could be more easier for me. So I won't, I won't, I won't still going to be attacked. I'm still going to go through tribulation and try, but I'll have the victory. I know how to get out of that situation because I've been taught how to do it. I've been trained, I've been more, I've been shaped. Do you see that? My God. Second Corinthians uh, Chronicles chapter seven. Second Chronicles chapter seven. Verse one and three. Look at the second Chronicles chapter one, one and seven. This Solomon. Then Solomon made a finished praying, and fire came down from heaven. Look at that. Woo! Consuming the burning offering and the sacrifice, and the glory of the Lord filled the whole temple. Man. And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled the house, the Lord's house. He filled in three. And all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and the glory of the Lord in the temple. And they bound their face to the ground, and their face to the ground. Look at that. And the patman and worship praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. That's the guy you need to serve, guys. Jehovah Sophia, God of King of Glory. He wants to manifest you who he is. The secret chapter 8, Ezekiel. A couple of more, that's it. Two more, so I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna get back to it. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 4. And behold, the glory of God, Israel, was there like a vision I saw in a plant. God saw the prophet Ezekiel in a vision, his glory, man. Spectacular. I said, Wow, he saw the God showed the abomination inside the church, what was going on inside the churches there, and that time in his period in the temple, in the captivity. But he was so he saw inside the temple how somebody backed off from the Lord and backslid it. And, put it, and started worshiping the sun. He said, come to the wall, Ezekiel. Look to the hole on the wall. And so they put their faces toward the sun. The sun worship. And as people started church doing that, doing a lot of worship, different gods inside the church. And they're doing all kinds of rituals and stuff. And God ain't going to accept that. He saw the glory of the vision. He saw what's going inside the temple. It was an abomination to his sight. And see if you can understand, Ezekiel chapter 8. 
mistake there. Matter of fact, let me read it off. Let me go there, look. And he said to me, son of man, your eyes are now towards the north. So I lift my eyes towards the north and north and the altar gate and the image of a jealous entrance. See, the worship and jealous entrance there, a jealous entrance. Furthermore, he said to me, son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abomination of the house of Israel. That's people committed here to make me go half far away from, from my sanctuary. You see, like I was going to walk away from them. Now turn again, you will see another greater abomination. So he brought me in the door of the courts, and I looked, there was a, a, a hole in the wall. He said to me, son of man, go into the wall. He saw a hole there. So he saw it. When he dug, he dug it. He started dug it in the wall. There was a door. He said, well, go and see it, the wicked abomination. He, they were doing there. You see this? His own people. He was watching the prophet. I saw him. So I went to the saw. There were sort of creeping things, type of demons inside the house of God. Look at that. Abominable beast. All the idols behind idols, of, most of the Korean behind the idols of demons, idols a house of Israel for training all around the wall. He, they have pictures of all kinds of demons in the wall, all kinds of weird things. That's why you careful when you have stuff in your house, make sure you take it out. Do not have no weird painting there. It could be a demon inside the painting. It's going to mess up your inside your house. You want your house to be a portal to heaven, not a portal to hell. Make sure you, anything you took, you bought any, any, any uh, antique shop, a statue, make sure it's right. and something weird about it, do not buy it. The Spirit's going to tell you. People in the church are so foolish. They go to all the seas and bring back pictures. They bring all certain pictures for the walls and stuff, man, idols and stuff. And they put it in the house, man. The thing is, and behind that is a demon waiting to, to manifest itself. You see that? Then he said, look, and then, there's two days before the seminary, man of God, look, wait there. Are the elders of the house of Israel, elders, man, it's sold out. And the mystic fool Jezebel had, the son of Shephat, each man of it had a censor in the hand. And kick clouds, a sense of we know we're doing sense like a preacher, we're doing all kinds of ritual. He said to me, Son of man, you have seen the, the elders of the house of Israel to dark every man in his room of idols. And he said, The Lord does not see us. They said, The Lord does not see you. They were saying, God does not see you. What are you talking about? They didn't say that. Look at that. And the Lord has forsaken the land. They God forsaken it. He said to me, Turn again, and you will see the great abomination that I'm doing. He brought me out to the door of the north gate of the lower house, and my dismay. The same woman sitting here there weeping. T timer. Who is this uh, timer? Uh, she's a type of fertility of the Samaritan fertility god that we're worshiping. She started crying. <laughs> the fertility god. That was not God. That was out of water. Look at that. Abomination. He said to me, have you seen all son of man? Turn again, you will see another great abomination to this. She was crying. That was a mockery. So he brought me into the inner court, the Lord's house. And there, the door of the temple, the Lord, between the porches, also there were 75 men. So, excuse me, 25 men. They back look, they look at there were 20 lists, and they back with towards the temple of the Lord. They turned back from the Lord and they face towards the east. They were worshiping the sun towards the east. You see, sun worship. They said to me, Have you seen the son of man? It's traveling thing. The house of Jews committed abomination when they come in here, but they have filled the land with violence. You see the results? They have continued to provoke me to anger. Indeed, they have put to branch the, the, with their noses. They have put stuff in their noses, all kinds of rituals. Therefore, I will act in the fear of my eyes will not spare them. No what I have pity. No, they will cry to my ears and loud voice, and I will not hear them. That's a synthesis and promise, man. When forsake the Lord. Let me take you there. When they walk away from the Lord, you see, God ain't gonna heal them. God is a God of glory. We're talking about, but when you forsake the Lord, it's gonna happen. You're gonna to do these things like this. Look what it says in Proverbs chapter one, the same thing. Look what it says in verse 23 to 27. That's it. Turn to my rebuke and surely I will pour my spirit upon you. I will make my own worst into you because I call you, they refuse. Look at that. I, this is what those are walking away from the Lord. Happy the same thing today. I stretch out my hand and no one regard it. Because you disdain my counsel, you will not have none, none of my rebukes. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock you when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm, your destruction is going to come like a whirlwind. The stress and anguish will come upon you. They will call upon me and I will not answer. They will seek me diligent, but they will not find me. Why? Because they hate knowledge that they not choose the fear of the Lord. You gotta fear the king of glory here. You gotta fear the king of glory. Jehovah this canoe. That's what stuff to do. He is the king of glory. He's the one who chose you and me, but the same time people when they hear way back, they do the same thing to them inside the churches. They're walking away that God is God's not hearing, God's not seeing. But God's gonna come visiting, He's gonna come saying, This is how it is. He brings judgment. He brings order to his house. Amen. So I'm going to stop here. Praise the Lord. Love you guys. I, will, I got so many scriptures, but I'm going to stop. Praise the Lord. Because it's 947. 
I will continue tomorrow on Jehovah uh, Shama. That means law is there. God is everywhere. God is in the midst of us. That's what it says in the Matthew, in the gospel, where two or three God in Emani, I'm in the midst of them. With two or three God in Emani, I'm in the midst of them. Jehovah Shama. He was with his people. He's also with us, the body of Christ. So I'm not bishop not to pray, praise the Lord, that God will continue blessing us, lying us, showing us, informing us, and point to us his word, his life, and others could be part of this beautiful zone, man. Pray, uh, honey, pray. pray. <laughs> praise the Lord. Got it? Speech, man. Praise God. Hallelujah. But thank you, Lord, once again. Uh, you're definitely the queen of glory, Lord. Who can be like you, Lord? Such a powerful God, Lord. Uh, I'm just in awe of you, Lord. I'm in awe. You said, who can ascend to the hills of the Lord? It says, those that have a pure heart and clean hands. Keep us for your glory. Keep us for your will. Protect us, forgive us, change us, transform us. You are the God of glory. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for always being with us. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for this teaching. We acknowledge you in all our ways. And we ask you to direct our path. We love you. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You're muted. You're muted. No, I'm, uh, I'm doing a benediction. Uh, chapter 6, 24 and 26. The Lord will bless you and keep you. The Lord makes faith shine upon you and be gracious into you. Let's turn faith towards you and give you peace. Father, we thank you, Father God, for this beautiful gathering here this morning. I ask you to bless the brothers who are listening, Father. They continue to blind them, show who they are through your word, through your names. They can go forth and be a blessing to others out there, Lord God, through the testimony to invite them to the church, Lord. They could be part of the Zoom, Father God. As you enlighten them, take any errors out of them, and you people to the Zoom, Father God. As you deliver, heal, restore, bring people waiting to learn your word and be faithful to you, Father God, because a lot of things going on. The way that you may are going to survive, Father God. It's going to be careless. It's going to be warfare. It's going to be problems, Lord God. For you, we can make it, Father God. Father, I bless them. I ask you, pray to, I pray to, to their minds, their doors, their house, their windows, their, their, their possession, handle their work and their influence, Father. Deliver their sons and daughters and so they seal their families, Father God. You need to be a blessing to their families, Lord God. Make them that gap, Father God. Fill the house with their glory. Fill it with your glory, Father God. Fill us with your glory. And fill the house with your glory, Lord. For your presence the words, my God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. Bless the burning water, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Heal us, take all these things out of our body. Anything is distracting us. Take anything that's trying to pray, rip it out, Holy Spirit. Put your seat, Lord. And we feel you back to prison, glory, Father. In Jesus Christ, Son, amen. This is Apostle Lizardo Zambro. Have a great day. Bless us a light. God bless you, Sylvia. Have a great day. Sister Lisa, I bless you. God bless you, Amanda. Have a great day. God bless you, honey. God bless. God bless. Praise the Lord. Have a good day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bless everyone. Have a great day. Amen. God bless. God bless. Amen. God bless. God bless. Bye, Thanks everyone. You. See you guys. I love you guys. See you guys tomorrow. Amen. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Lord.